as per usual on a Friday at 6. Put that up there for a second, guys. Uh, give everyone a, a few minutes to uh, to arrive. Reach another, another Friday. I've been doing this now for about a year, probably, yeah, or maybe longer, I'd say, what, since COVID started, probably two years. Uh, God, it doesn't seem that long, does it? Let me go in now to get the chat up. So if anyone's chatting, I, I'll get to, to kind of see you. Uh, the thumbnail took the picture quickly. So as you see the top of my head, I can see on the uh, on the live stream thumbnail. Let's work on that uh, some other time. So yeah, like, uh, so for the first few minutes, it's usually just me just getting comfortable, getting relaxed. And uh, then, uh, you know, it takes about like, you know, 15, 20 minutes to, to kind of get going with people as well. Like, uh, you know, the first few minutes are usually just me rambling away, then everyone saying hello. And then, uh, you know, we get down to, to talking about Blackthorn or Irish culture or just really getting to know each other where I usually kind of ask a lot of questions to the people watching just to uh, to, to get to know them as well. Uh, I've been focusing on the sticks this week. I have about 15 sticks that I was hoping to get online today, but it'll, it'll be tomorrow. I'm just looking them behind me, they're drying in the corner. Uh, so I should have 15 uh, new walking sticks on there. Um, I have cudgels that I need to get on there as well. And um, it seems like uh, a lot of people have been watching that uh, uh, Star Wars thing on Disney with, with uh, Boba Fett. And, uh, you know, getting people out, starting to, to, I see that online and people are asking me because, you know, he has a kind of like a longer shillelagh and he has that um, Fijian like war stick type thing from, from Fiji, which was, uh, which was quite, quite an interesting thing to, uh, to have as well on that series. So, um, yeah, so it's interesting there that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're using wooden, wooden weaponry on, uh, on the, uh, the, the Boba Fett, uh, TV series, which is online at the moment. So that, that's pretty interesting as well. Uh, so yeah, so this week I haven't really been doing too much, uh, just focusing on sticks, making a lot of handles, straightening sticks. Um, you know, straightening sticks can take up uh, quite quite a, a big part of the day as well when you're straightening them because it's not like, you know, you have a piece of hazel straightening, which which can be done in a, a quick manner. When you have a seasoned piece of black torn wood, you have to kind of like take your time and, and season it uh, pretty slowly. I mean, so I straighten it pretty slowly because you don't want it to snap, you don't want to put too much pressure. There's a there's a whole there's a whole art form to straightening a, a piece of black torn too. It's not it's not that easy, and then you have to give it uh, you know the balance and make sure the center of gravity is working on it as well. So we have Tony, my friend. Hello, Francis. How are you, Tony? It's always always good to 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 see see you on the stream as well. Uh, you know, hope everything is is okay there with you, and uh, hope hope is well. So how how are you and your uh, your your Irish girlfriend getting on? Uh, you know. Are is that okay to talk about Tony? Uh, I don't like. Uh, are you still are you still together after after the Christmas, and uh, after being locked up like everyone, after all of these kind of things? Well, we're not really locked up anymore, but it still feels like it though. It just the uh, the the cage is a bit bigger. We've been moved to a bigger cage. Uh, so anyone who's here, don't be shy. Um, I'm here for the next hour to to answer any questions, to get to know you. You can get to know me. You can ask me anything you want. Uh, I think uh, today I had uh, I got a phone call from a guy um, from from Listol, uh, called Joe, and uh, he's probably uh, he's probably watching uh, as well. And uh, Joe he came on the phone and he was like told me he's a hobby stick maker, but he makes a lot of black term walking sticks. And um, he said to me, you know, I've been making sticks for fifteen years. You know, I'm I'm you know I've I, I used to go to the market in Listol and like sell up there quite a lot. I've never never heard of the guy. But, uh, you know, and then he was asking me, he said, like, he's making sticks for 16 years. He knows black turn inside out. Then he asked me, he says, uh, how do you, uh, how do you seal, how do you seal black turn? And like, I just said to him with a sealer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he was, what's that? I said, just go in and ask for a sealer, wood sealer. Uh, that's how you seal, seal wood. Uh, you can just buy it in any shop. There's, there's plenty of, like, uh, there's plenty of products to, to seal a piece of wood. Like it's, uh. You know, so that when once he was asking me questions or two like that, I, I knew that he he's brand new to stick making. Uh, he's come across my channel. He's probably researching uh, about how to to make black torn, which is fine. Like you know, I don't mind mind all of that. But like if you're new, just there's no shame in saying you're new to black torn. Uh, you know, just say you're brand new. You don't know anything. Like you know, because like whenever guys trying to tell me they've been doing black torn for 15, 16 years, and after you talk to them for less than thirty seconds, you know 
their their brand new like so i've always uh always found that quite interesting so i had a i had a call about an hour or two and um, he said he wants me to make a video about it so i said i'll make a video but the, literally the question is how do you seal uh black wood after cutting it and my answer sealer <laughs> you know it'll probably be a five second video i might actually do that for i think it'd be funny to, to put out there as well five second video of like how do you seal wood with a sealer at the end uh so we have tim uh, good evening, Francis. I got your email with with the, all of those pictures, Tim, that you sent on, and and thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen those pictures many times, um, over uh, over the years as well. There's there's a good print Pinterest board by um that uh, Antrim uh, uh, guy. Uh, what's his name? Maxime. Yes, the 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 guy who's the main guy there. Uh, you know that that is educating on on the the Antrim style of uh, of stick fighting. But uh, I if you want interesting pictures like. He's the guy. He's he's like a writer. He he does um, he he works as an archaeologist, I think, in uh, in um, in Montreal, and uh, he is like an academic type of uh, type of person. But like, yeah, I've I've seen like a load of these pictures. He knows like if you ever want to information on on any of them, he knows them pretty well. Like um, in the pictures you sent me is like the picture of the guy who broke his stick stick fighting. And uh, it's quite quite interesting to uh, to see that. But uh, yeah, like all like all all the pictures, I've I've seen them all um, over over the years, and I've read uh, I've read uh, pretty much all the books. The Hurley books are pretty good. I read recent Sean Mornhan one. Uh, you know Patrick, you know <laughs> this is this is the the main one that came out in the seventies. <coughs> this is like the main uh, the main book. It's the uh, the Irish faction fighters. Um, it's a Kerry man. So this this book was was published by who you can see on the back uh the Kerry man uh, as you can see the price of it and um, if you can see that camera it's like one pound back one pound and seven p so this one is uh this book came out i think in 1975 let me just check again to see but this is like a, it's a pretty old book yeah 1975 uh published by the it was made and printed in republic of ireland by the Kerry man newspaper county Kerry. Okay, and this is like, you know, one of the, the first main books in the 1975 that came out about uh, faction fighters. And in the 70s, you know, the Bruce Lee thing, Chuck Norris was getting going, all of these guys. But, uh, <coughs> you know, I've read all these books. I've seen a lot of the pictures. I've gone on all the Pinterest boards as well. And But every now and again, like, you know, there's a new reference or something like that. I think uh, that the guy who wrote the, the Kerry Blackthorn stick fighting uh, book recently... He came up with a good source there last week. I saw he posted it on uh, on Facebook about it's from the 1700s, like a, a reference to this gentleman, you know, these kind of noble guys that had uh, black torn uh, sticks as well, and uh, a reference to a loaded uh, a loaded butt as well, which would be the kind of shorter ones. Uh, so we have, let's see, go back and read some of the the comments here. We have uh, Tony saying, "I'm okay, Francis, very well," and yes, uh, she won't leave me. <laughs> She's a she's a good lady. She won't she won't lead you like you're. They're the ones you want. They're the keepers. Um, I'm actually waiting for her to call. She needs uh, picking up. Yeah, like uh, I know that feeling. You're you're a personal taxi service to 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 all the family members. For me, it's it's my my daughter at the moment. Her social life is 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 taken off. Like she wants to be go to Belfast. She wants to go to Cork. She wants to go. Oh my God, she wants to go everywhere. But uh, we have a man called Hondo. Uh, recently found, yeah, I've seen your comments uh, on the channel there. Uh, I've, I've, I think I replied to a few of them. Recently found your channel. Great stuff. Glad to make a live stream. Well, Hondo, welcome. You know, what's your name? Do, I, do you want to be just called uh, called Hondo or something like that? So introduce yourself, like, or I think you have it next to it. So I was gifted a black torn stick last year, and uh, West Texas terrain has been hard on it. Thinking of stripping it and uh, resealing it. Um like is it is it just the bottom of it that's just kind of worn away from the terrain um sometimes like you know a lot of i don't know in america you always want to take all the bark off and leave the bare wood but like with black torn like the bark is is kind of interesting and like you can gently sand it down and bring out a load of a uh, load of these colors purple hues and, and things like that as well so look looks pretty good but yeah look if you ever want to have a gold stick you just have to sand it down completely um seal it and then you have to just choose on what finish you're going to use. Um, very light, thin coats as well. Um, you know, put a few on, and uh, as good as new. Then you know, you make it, <coughs> make it your own. 
Uh, but like once you buy the sticker, it's gifted to you. It's your stick. You can do what you want to it then. Uh, Francis, just curious, is linseed oil good for black tarn? Um, linseed oil is good like in bare wood, you know, like um, like cricket bats is famous for linseed oil or something like that. Or, um, you know, if you want, so if you got like, if you got like a bare wood where there's loads of grain and you kind of put linseed oil on it, it kind of looks, looks nice. You know, any of the oils, they always have the kind of similar type of, uh, type of effect. Um, linseed oil doesn't really look good on the, like the shaft of the black thorn, you know, the, the bark. And then if you have all the thorns sticking out and stuff, <coughs> like oil is more like, um, more kind of like, uh, like kind of watery it runs a bit more and it kind of gathers in places as well so like you know usually you pour it on with a lint cloth and then you have to like get rid of all the uh the, the bits and pieces as well uh so like you know yeah so that that would be like so linseed linseed oil is all right like for you know beer pieces of wood like you know something like that like say for example if you had maybe a like a piece of oak uh shillelagh and you had the bark removed on it as well because like oak has like kind of nice grain to it as well. You put a bit of linseed oil on it, something like that. Um, then you have boiled and unboiled linseed oil. Uh, my dad's there. He says, hello, everyone. Hello, dad. How are things? I saw you just briefly today when you were dropping Nan over. The man called Hando. Also keen to order one of your hiking sticks. Uh, mine is great for a walk, but uh, a bit short for hiking in the mountains. Yeah, like <coughs> my advice for hiking sticks is the ones I have, like they're... They're, they're, they're kind of strong and they're light, you know, but like, like really heavy because if you want a hiking stick, you know, you don't want it to be like a kg in weight, like two pounds plus in weight because, you know, it's tough on your wrist and stuff. So you just want something that's, you know, maybe about like seven eighths of an inch thick, maybe an inch thick, something something around that kind of size. And uh, I actually have a bunch of hiking sticks um, actually finished that I need to put online as well, just getting the time to take the photos and with the internet connection. Um, so I'll probably, hopefully this weekend, I'll I'll get up about twenty hiking sticks, maybe ten shillelaghs, and about fifteen or sixteen um, uh, walking sticks. That's what I hope to 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 get uploaded this weekend. Uh, let's see. A man called Hondo says, "My name's Jonathan. Very nice to meet you. And uh, originally you're a Texan, so you make a reference to to being in Texas." Uh, Silver says, "Hello, Francis and fellows in the chat. Uh, hey, Silver, how are you? What's what's uh, what's your name and story like to?" To get to know you as well, or where you're from, and uh, maybe your connection to Ireland or to Blackthorn would be nice to know. Uh, I'd like to leave the bark on. Uh, I got a few nicks in there and here. Not sure what finish it has. I want to seal it protected from the uh, the elements. <coughs> uh, yeah, like um, Blackthorn is like um, it's pretty good with the elements. The only thing with Blackthorn is like, if it went from like freezing cold into like a hot room straight away, it's probably not the best for for any type of wood. Like, um, I had actually an instance there recently where it was like minus uh, 31 degrees in Montreal, like cold. And there was this uh, this hiking stick that I'd sent and it like frozen like solid. And then it was brought into a warm, really warm, hot uh, location there straight away. And it went from frozen to hot really, really fast. And, you know, it, uh, you know that's that's not good for any wood as well. And, uh, you know, naturally there that that would would crack when you're like moving it from one place to another. Um, but it seems to do well in the desert. Like uh, I've sent some to Arizona before and a few other places and uh, it seems to, uh, to to hold up well to, to that. I think it's just when it goes from really cold to really hot. That's like the danger, like with, with most woods. <coughs> um, so if you want to, to leave the bark on, just kind of gently sand it. Just get a bit of sandpaper, gently sand it down, you know, take off like, you know, a few layers of what was 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 on it as well. And, uh, you know, maybe like, depending how smooth it is, like you could, you could use, I suppose, a bit of oil or something on it. Just once there's not places that it's going to like be gloopy, like you just want like, you know, more like a shellac sanding sealer or something might be nice to, to kind of, uh, you know, put it on after you kind of like sand it down. Uh, let's see. Tim says, hello, Frank. He's saying hello to my dad. Uh, we have Claymore as well. Evening all. Uh, thanks for the speedy delivery of my new stick. Really like this one. Uh, well, I like them all. Well, thank you so much. You've been a great, uh, great supporter of uh, of my craft in the last few months, and I do appreciate it as well. And uh, yeah, the shipping is is pretty good over over to you there as well, so it doesn't take too long. I think you have you up to about four or five sticks now. It must be something like that. Um, Jonathan says, as they say, I wasn't born here, but I got here quick as I could. Uh, my mom's family's from New York, where I was born. And uh, my father family ranches lives around uh, the, uh, the the southwest uh, USA, and uh, yeah, so like you know, you'd be you'd be if you were in Ireland, they'd call you a blow in. A blow in is someone you know you'd come from another county and you'd come into the state, and uh, here in County Kerry, you know, <laughs> you're always a blow in. 
you know, even like, you know, uh, you know, my dad's here since the 70s, but he'd still be considered a, a blowing into Kerry because he came from Fermanagh. Uh, where uh, you know Tim McKern has a has a connection to to that part of that that part of the world I know, um, and let's see Tony says Francis who said you ain't got a good stock of stick <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah man I was surprised of the amount that you have in storage, uh, good on you real professional and hello to your dad yeah uh, Mister Potato Head guys I call him he was uh you know art you know you know yourself like there's always these guys that just. They're, they're just wanting to like rail you and stuff but like i just i, I just thought it'd be funny to like uh you know some guy was going on about this and that um i think like i was kind of you know like he he's one of those guys he he's starting to call himself like a master stick fighter after you know just taking it up like last summer and uh you know you, you can't be a master stick fighter like after taking up like you know the the stick fighting stuff after a year like you know to be a master of anything you you know for me it's you have to put good 10 years of service you know to be a master or, uh, or something like that but uh yeah like there's 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 all of these weird guys out there you just can't help it but sometimes they make good they give me ideas for for content because you know i, I have like 560 odd videos on youtube i always need to kind of like start thinking of new things to do as well uh, Claymore says, now that's uh, six you have of mine. Very good. Um, I can see more on the horizon this year. Yeah, I've got I got a nice few ones like lined up as well. Uh, I, I keep trying to, to find the nicest pieces of wood in my shed and then rooting around. And uh, I think I, the, the, between now and March, I should have uh, some, some nice uh, nice sticks <laughs> coming up. Uh, my dad there just uh, saying, uh, saying, hey, Tony. Uh, we have my good friend, the greatest uh, Muhammad Ali fan, who has given us some some education on that last week on the live stream? Hi Francis, uh, how long does it take you to, to take a seasoned blackthorn stick and make it until it's all finished? And uh, do you do several in stages at a time or one at a time? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, <clears throat> so for me, going out to cut the the piece of blackthorn, to it probably might depending on how thick it is. Like sometimes two years, sometimes three years, and um, you usually have to season the wood. Um, usually you put the the heavy side hanging down to leave a bit of gravity because you know you want to to get the uh, the, the sap out as you know and uh, to to season well without it cracking the stick. Um, usually it needs to be in a room with lots of moving air and wind. That seems to help it season season a lot. And if it's in the kind of like an area where there's not much air moving and stuff like that, it seems to take forever. And then you have to be careful in the summertime if it gets like in really hot sun or if it's just like you know if it's if the temperature goes really up your 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 pieces that are a little bit thicker than than an inch are prone to crack and to to be destroyed so it takes me about two to three years uh then when i pull it out of the shed um do you do several stages at a time uh, yeah like i'll you know season a bunch i come back to it season come back to it so i might be working on like maybe 20 sticks at the, at, at the one time and I go from one stick, do something, go to the other stick, do something, go to the other stick. And I kind of do it in that way. <laughs> and because like you always have to wait, like say if you're straightening, you've got to wait. If you put on a coat, you've got to wait. If you sand it and dirt and things. So it's not like you can just kind of go, like you could probably just, you know, work on it as well. Um, and also like you get tired, like, um, you know, if you're doing handles, like carving handles and you're using the rasp and everything, like your your shoulder just starts to go after a while. So you just go to straightening then. And like what I found is that by not over exerting myself with making the handles, I seem to, to, to be able to stay injury free. Like, um, you know, if if you get it over overzealous and uh, too, you know, pushing, your, it's not like in the gym where you're lifting weights and you want to break yourself and get the muscles and, and going. Like uh, what I found is you're more prone to injury, like when you're a strange yourself and you've overworked and then you start doing more handles. Then you go in the next day and you, you work on the handles again and then <laughs> you could be out for a week or two with, with an injury. Um, so like, um, yeah, so I, I do I do several stages at, at once. Um, I don't really do the sticks like one at a time and stuff. Like I just kind of like do it all together, try to work on handles. Like um, you got to be in the mood for doing this as well. Like, you know, when I have to, to straighten sticks, like, you know, eight hours of straightening sticks or sometimes I do a full day of it. Like, you know, it's it's boring. Yeah. I usually listen to, to podcasts, listen to music, uh, you know, watch the, the, the stock market and the stock news and stuff like that. Uh, you know, listening about crypto and stuff, uh, listening about future science, technology, um, business, um, mindsets, videos, 
uh, sales, you know, some marketing stuff as well. It just depends on what, what I'm into. I started watching chess videos recently. I went down that kind of rabbit hole uh, about a week ago. I got my son like a chess set and uh, I started, uh, you know, watching the old like uh, Bobby Fisher videos and stuff and started playing a bit of that. Uh, and I found it pretty relaxing to, to go on to chess.com and uh, start playing a bit of chess. It was kind of interesting to do. Uh, Ed says, greeting from Tennessee. I mastered the art of bullshit in under a year. BS in under a year. That's very good. That's very good. Um, you know, anyone connected to Ireland, you can bullshit for 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 Ireland. Like, uh, you know, you know, you, you give you give a guy a little piece of string, he's going to he's going to run with it. And uh, you know, Irish people have no problem talking, and uh, you know, they can they can exaggerate, they can be sarcastic. You know, there's loads of banter as well. Like, you see, the thing is, when you're talking to an Irish person, you don't know if they're angry with you, if they're happy with you, if they're teasing with you. You know, you're not really too sure and confused. And, uh, you know, it's very, very subtle. Like, you know, usually it's a little smile or a smirk that'll tell you if they're joking, if they're serious. You know, a little lift of the eyelid or something like that. A lot, a lot of little nuances as well. Uh, but our, Ireland people and Irish people, <laughs> we're pretty good at talking. Uh, you can put us in front of anywhere. You know, we'll we'll talk away. Uh, we we enjoy having a bit of fun, and uh, you know, we do like the attention as well. Uh, probably small country syndrome. We just need to 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 get noticed. Uh, Zero Fox, how are you? Good evening, Francis. Very uh, very good to see you on the live stream. Uh, how's everything with you? And um, you know, what's what's going on in in your world? Be interesting to 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 hear a bit about you as well. Um, Tony says, I just enjoying a mug of little Irish cream flavored instant coffee. Yes, my Irish girlfriend is uh, is trying to convert you, yeah? <laughs> Before you know it, you'll be, uh, you know, you know you're Irish when, you know, Phil, ask her that. You know, you know you're Irish when and, and see what she says. Uh, you know, if you, 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 if you like to, um, you know, if you know you're Irish when, and I think I mentioned in the live stream, like, you say you're late for work because you're stuck behind the tractor. I think that's it. Uh, you know, like, there's, there's certain things as well. Eating tato crisps, tatoes. You know, eating, uh, drinking Barry's tea is an Irish Irish thing as well. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, watching the Late Late Toy Show. <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, the Greatest. Wow, um, that's good going. Thanks, Francis. Yep, not a bother. Happy to uh, to answer any questions. Uh, the Irish are always uh, as good crack. Yeah, yeah. Like, we just want to have fun. Like, you know, the, the thing is, if you live in Ireland for a year, like, you know, you'd understand how Irish people are. Like, the weather's unforgiving. People are a bit weird, you know, so you're always like, you know, looking for for someone new or, or looking for an old audience. Like everyone's good at talking. Everyone can talk for Ireland and stuff as well. <clears throat> but like, you know, you put us in a group of people from a different country. It's, uh, you know, we, we go into our element, you know, it's almost like performing or, or, or taking the stage. Uh, let's see. The man called Hondo. It sounds like you're talking about my mother's family. They could talk about anything with anyone and you really have to listen and see if they're laughing with you or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, do you know the thing about, you know, do you want do you want a biscuit with your cup of tea? <laughs> you know, like when when you're with your mother's family, if they offer you a cup of tea and a biscuit, you always say yes, whether you want it or not. And, you know, you have to drink it no matter what way they, they give it to you as well. And everyone has their own way of, of, of drinking tea. But if you ever get offered like tea or biscuits or something like that when you're in an Irish person's house just say yes you know if you don't and it's the same with drinking like you know I wouldn't be a big drinker of alcohol you know and stuff like that but uh if someone offers you like a drink in their house you take it always like <clears throat> you know even if you don't want it you just take it <laughs> like you know that's that's just how how it should be you know it, it's it's polite in Irish culture uh let's see now uh Frank says a uh, high uh, high Irish as well uh, Zero Fox says, all good in Somerset. Cheers. I have increased the rhyme brewing to nine gallons now. Going to get smashed in the summer. That sounds good, man. That's going to sound good. Uh, who knows? I might have come over to Somerset. Uh, I've actually looked at it before. It looks like a nice place for the uh, for the kids. Don't you? What's that place in Somerset? It's like an earth dome nature reserve or something like that. And um, it's Exmoor, Exmoor National Park. I think I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> no, there's like a new new key. There used to be a flight between Cork and New Key, and I think that's like near near Somerset or, or some something like that. And uh, I was going to bring over the uh, the the kids there, and uh, they look like a lot of good fun things to do. And uh, I think there's like dinosaur bone place as well. And there's a planetarium. I try I'm trying to remember now, but uh, yeah, Somerset looks like actually a decent spot. 
And actually, Somerset is like, reminds me of like the, the Kerry, like, you know, people that I've met from Somerset, like, you know, people kind of like are always like mocking their accent and stuff and stuff like that. But it's the same here in County Kerry, like Somerset is kind of, it has that kind of County Kerry vibe feel to it. And uh, I know there's just something interesting, but I actually wouldn't mind going up. I'm trying to remember, is you correct? Is it Exmoor? Is there that big national park there? Or I can't remember, like, but uh, it looks like a, a fun type of place to, to get out there. And uh, wine brewing. Yeah, everyone's making their home brew. I never got into to brewing beer and alcohols and stuff, but uh, it'd be pretty interesting. Black Torn beer, you know, something like that. McCaffrey's Black Torn. And let's see, I uh, just bought a vacuum pump and chamber to, to degas it. Yeah, like there's 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 a there's a skill to that too, and a patience, and uh, you know, I hope uh, hope the 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 homebrew wine wine goes goes pretty well. But you can learn anything you want on a on, uh, YouTube now. Like that's whenever I need to to learn something new, I just go onto YouTube. I watch a few videos. Like, uh, <coughs> was it last night? Oh my God! Maybe you can relate to it. Did you ever have your wife buy something in the shop and she hasn't got a clue how to use it, what it is, but the packaging just didn't look nice? Or her friend said this is pretty pretty interesting to, to do. So my wife, she came home with this, uh, what's it called? Forio. It's like, <clears throat> you have to charge it. It's some electronic device. It's like, a, it's, it's shaped in like an oval uh, type of thing. And she didn't know how to use it. And she was like, how do I use this? There's no instructions, no nothing. And uh, she was like, is it a face mask? Is it something for your skin? Does it exfoliate? And I'm there you know, sitting in the corner of the sitting room, like trying to keep warm by the radiator. I have a cup of tea in my hand, <coughs> reading the news on my phone as I do. And I just look up at her and I was like, what? And uh, yeah, like I had to, oh, you know, I had to, to watch uh, YouTube makeup videos. I had to watch like this 15 minute one of how to like, you know, plug it in, download an app, get a Bluetooth and these different lights shine on your face and make you beautiful or something. Oh, God, it was, it was, it was, uh, you know, you, you you feel sorry for, uh, you know, for, for these victims of uh, these marketing where the packaging looks nice, it looks pretty, their friend recommended, you know, it was like 40 euros she bought this thing for and uh, could, you didn't have a clue how to use it. So, but anyway, like my, my point there was uh, YouTube's handy for learning it. So uh, all now on my YouTube channel, the recommendations are all these makeup subs coming up today. I shouldn't have gone, gone down that ro uh, rabbit hole. <coughs> Let's see, I am, I, I, you're welcome to a drop if you're ever a passing. Sounds good. Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, I actually might. I might call over to Somerset. I might go, like, to places. I want to go to Germany. I want to go to Somerset. Uh, I'd like, I want to go to Florida, Texas as well. Uh, you know, it seems like, you know, Texas and Florida getting a lot of positive publicity for the way they've kind of dealt with this kind of, uh, you know, worldwide thing that's we're all sick of going on to year three of. Um Let's see, the, uh, Jonathan says, I've done a bit of brewing uh, ginger beer mostly so far. I need to build a spot to really uh, dedicate to expand it. Wine brewing sounds great as well. Yeah, there's like, <clears throat> for me, I, I, I'd love the idea as well of like brewing your own beer, taking your time. Like there's something really rewarding when you make something yourself, like a craft beer. You know, you feel proud of it. You work on the taste. Um, it's all about time. That's the thing, like, Jonathan. You probably know yourself, like, yeah, I have, like you, I have all these things that I'd love to do and stuff, and it's just getting the time. Because, like, when you kind of rush it or do it to the side, it's never going to turn out. You just have to kind of, like, you know, take your time. <coughs> and then what you find is no one will support you, like, as in family members. You're like, I want to do this. I want to do brewing. I want to build this thing. And then the wife and the family just, what? You know, oh, okay. You know, and then, oh, you know, you're, you're spending too much time in, in your shed and things like that you have to deal with. Uh, let's see now, uh, the great says zero box, nine gallons. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that won't last you the summer though. Nine, nine gallons is, is a lot, I think. Uh, let's see. Jim Kelly says, hello, Francis and Frank. Uh, Frank, will you be coming back on the show anytime? He will. It's, uh, <clears throat> he wants to, he definitely wants to come back. It's usually up, up to me. I'm just a bit busy and stuff and, uh, and a few things as well, but, uh, yeah, he could have came on today, I just, I just didn't really set it up and stuff, he, he's definitely keen to come back, I'll be on soon, but just getting my solar panel, oh, yeah, yeah, Nana's telling me about that, the solar panels and the gas boiler sorted, like, uh, you're waiting for a plumber for a while, and, uh, Nan told me the, uh, the, the cost of, of getting it fixed, it's a big number, you know, <coughs> I'll have to, uh, have to look at that now, like, as well, so, yeah, the solar panels, like, but you've had them for about 10 years, wasn't it, they heat up the water, and stuff as well 
you know my dad he's he's very sophisticated has the solar panels for me you have to heat up the water just with the uh you know the boiler and uh you know the oil heating and stuff still still <laughs> still burning oil in my house uh Let's see, the, the uh, let's see, uh, Jonathan says, also McCaffrey's Black Turn sounds like a fantastic beer, just from the name. And yes, they're not near enough time for anything, though. My wife is very supportive. That's good. Just need more time. You see, I'm like a man full of ideas. And then my wife is like, pick one and just do it. And then I move from one thing to it. That's why it's like the question earlier, like I'm, I'm do one on one stick, one in the other, one in the other. And I kind of work like a little whirlwind or hurricane. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, but my, my wife isn't really fully supportive of, of most of the things I suggest because she just looks at me and goes, oh, another idea. Uh, Tony must go now. Uh, great live chat and take care of you. Yeah, drive safely anyway and uh, give my regards to your, your Irish uh, girlfriend. Uh, you know, still waiting for, for you to, to put the ring in it, man. You got you got to propose, Tony. <laughs> you know, three years now, man. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're taking your time. Uh, the greatest, uh, you can buy a small uh, still on eBay and all the kit to make your own uh, vodka and whiskeys. Yeah, or, or make your own pochine, you know. Pochine making, I still think, is illegal in Ireland. That's the kind of like, uh, <coughs> you know, the Irish moonshine, pochine, made from uh, from, from potatoes as well. Uh, <laughs> I have some of that, actually, pochine. Uh, somewhere on you. I, maybe it's illegal, so we'll, 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 redact, we'll redact that. But uh, pochine, I think every Irish household will have a bit of it somewhere. <coughs> LSE Zero Fox, so cheers Tony. Uh, cheers, yeah, they're all saying goodbye, and uh, it's always a pleasure when uh, when Tony can join the uh, the live stream. Uh, Ron says greetings to Francis and the Order of the Black Thorn, and also greetings to you, Ron. How are things with you? Do you have any handy hobbies, Ron? What do you do to unwind? <coughs> so you know, at the end of a long week, you know, do you have do you have like something that you go to to unwind on? Like some of the guys here making some craft beers. Uh, we have. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you're the guy there making uh, nine gallons of wine and stuff like that. Uh, so, Ron, what about you? Is there anything you you kind of make? <coughs> the only thing I'm drinking at the moment, guys, is, is some water. <coughs> Let's see now. Uh, my father, was my granddad, was a great man for making <laughs> Mountain Dew, yeah. He'd, uh, you know, you'd always, you'd always, well, it was, it was used for the farm, wasn't it? What did they say? The, the pochine and stuff was used as a medical treatment for the lambing or something. What was the story? It was always something to do with the, the lambs or, or something like that when they were born. They needed or to rub on the gums of, of something. Uh, I remember that was always the excuse for having it around. It was like a medical like a medical thing. Uh, let's see. John says, I feel what you mean about needing a lot of different ideas to work on. I'm building a homestead, homeschooling my son. Volunteer to teach history about the Indian Wars fort in town. <coughs> yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to homeschool um my kids as well. Like, uh, oh, I think I think schooling is um, I don't know, man. It's like it's. I went through the school system in Ireland. The way it's taught and schooling is done. Like you know, if I had the time to to sit down and do it, I I definitely would do it. But uh, I just don't have the the time to to homeschool as well. Uh, like you know the way the way schools are set up and stuff it needs to be it needs to evolve like it just doesn't work anymore uh the principal of the the local school here knows uh you know isn't is uh, me and her don't don't agree on a, a lot of things and uh the two of the schools as well i hate talking to teachers um you know they they they're hard to to speak to they you know they 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 talk to you like you're one of the kids sometimes and i call them by their first name and it usually shocks them it's like really weird uh that's pretty cool, I think, and, and building a homestead. I, I tried to build an underground bunker with my son when I thought my business was gone when COVID first started. Um, back in March, <clears throat> March 2019, the first like proper lockdown happened in Ireland. It was March the 14th. It was a Friday. They said the schools are closed, everything's closed, and my business, like the traffic, the stats, the money whew, went down. <clears throat> I had my first, uh, my first zero month ever. Like where I didn't sell anything. I actually, I think maybe like one or two. It was very close to it as well. I think I'd sold one or two. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. You know, what am I going to do now? And like most people at the start, everyone was like, right, we don't know what this is about. It could be something serious. It could be pretty bad. So I did what Eddie, any good dad did. I said, right, son, come on, we'll build an underground bulker. And uh, we went out in the garden and we started digging and digging and digging. And then 
it kind of became a chore because my business started to pick up and I was really busy and the son was like, you know, dad, we finished that yet. And then like, oh, it was, and then we hit some, some kind of really hard clay rock and bedrock and we couldn't, we got this little mini digger to try to like uh, dig down deeper and it just wouldn't dig down deeper. And then, you know, the water was like, we're on a hill and I thought it'd be like, okay. But like then all psh, the water started to come up from the ground and, you know, I put this concrete base in it and we put like the plastic underneath to waterproof it. And <clears throat> I got these like earth bags and sandbags and uh, it's still, it's still not finished. Like, uh, I, I don't know, will we come back to it as well? He's kind of lost interest in it. I kind of put that to the side, but uh, yeah, like building uh, like something is, is interesting. You know, like I suppose every guy needs their own space. You know, you're like, it's a man cave, they say, but <clears throat> you know, it, it's very, it's very therapeutic for a man to like, just get away from everything because like, you know, you work hard, you, you have a hard day at work. Like, you know, you come home, you're tired, you're hungry, you're everything, you know, you might have your family, you know, there's, there's some drama at school or there's something else going on. And like, you have to go then from the minute you're in the door, you have to do the homework and all, all these different things. So it's like, it's very, very good to have like a shed or to have some place to go just in the evenings or to get away for an hour or two. It's, it's very, it's very good for clearing the mind as well. Uh, he volunteered to teach history as well. Yeah, that's, that's a... Uh, History is, uh, you know, is always good to, uh, to to pass on, especially if you can get young people into history as well. It's it's, it's pretty good. Uh, about the uh, the Indian uh, wars, uh, fort in in uh, town. Well, like when I suppose everyone listens that Joe Rogan, he's always about like the Comanche Indians and uh, he's the Book of the Rising something I think it's called. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, like there's um, I don't know a lot about like um the 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 history and the Indian wars in in the USA and stuff. I know there's lots of tribes and I, I know, like, I think the Comanche, of course, most people have had heard about for their, you know, their, their violence and stuff like that. Um, Geronimo was like a, a, a general or so, or whatever the equivalent was as well. I think in the, uh, you know, for, for the, uh, the Indians, or I don't even like Native Americans or whatever the, uh, the, the correct word is as well. I wouldn't even know. Uh, it's something I, I want to read and, and read up on. It'd be interesting to, to know because, you know, they lived like nomads, they're hunter-gatherers. You know, I'd love to know the way they did things, some of their craft and things. Like, that'd be interesting. Like, I'd love to, to go to one of the reserves and just kind of, like, see and, you know, see what, what kind of skills and traditions were preserved. Like, you know, most people find that boring, but I find that quite interesting. Uh, let's see now. Uh, one of these days, I'll get a, get a, get a still, uh, let's get a second out. Let me, did I miss any comments here? No, Tony's going. He said, thanks, Francis. Thanks for all you guys. Greatest uh, channel uh, by now uh one of these days i'll get a get a still going <laughs> yeah why not like you know i think i think for men it's it's good to have ambition like you know men's brains are wired a bit different from women's and stuff and everything and you know there's there's not a lot of like channels out there that just focus on you know the masculine mindset and uh, the things that men need and men want because like everyone thinks like you know ah, they're fine you know men are quiet you know they're they're going to do the things but like you know there's there's things that are quite therapeutic like <laughs> you know the inside all of us like there's this hunter gatherer thing whether you're going fishing or hunting you know there's just something inside you that enjoys that uh, making things as well uh, you know providing for your family is is very kind of uh, something that that you like to do as well uh let's see now we have a uh, uh cows needed it my dad says ron says converting my garage to be a man cave board games and learning how to uh, freestyle in rap that's that's pretty good ron ron you you got the skills there to start your own uh, youtube channel uh you should definitely uh you should definitely give it a go um you know if if uh if you, you know what looks good in a man cave <laughs> loads of black torn on the wall you gotta get you get more mccaffrey black torn as well <laughs> But uh, yeah, like uh, you said, board games and stuff. Like, what kind of games? Like a chess or something like that? Or are you more into like Monopoly or or Cluedo or or Risk or something like that? And uh, to to freestyle and rap, that's that's pretty good. That's the kind of form of like poetry, I suppose. Like you have to know how to rhyme things. <coughs> uh, I wouldn't know too much about rap now. Like it's not not really too too uh, too big a thing over over in Ireland. Like uh, we have Shannon Keys that talk and storytellers. That that's about it. Uh, let's see. The man called Han, or sorry, Jonathan says uh, that would make a great video series. Uh, I'd love a bunker, but golly, it's all rock in the mountainside. I live on working in sheds and shops. Yeah, 
I, I tried and it was a disaster. Like, you know, sometimes you got to know when you're you're beaten. Nature nature got the best of me. <laughs> uh, it was just a tiny little one and it just didn't look. And then it was just too much effort. And then I didn't want to put too much money and stuff into it. And, you know, it, it, it's um, it's something maybe like me and my son when he's older. And we, you know, get get some proper, uh, get an engineer to help us out, man. We need, we need it probably. <clears throat> sometimes you do need to, uh, to, to get uh, some uh, some experience. Let's see now. Uh, John from Donegal, how's it going? How are you, John? How are things with you? Um, what's going on in your life and your world? Let's uh, let's hear. Uh, John says, my grandfather had to to fell fifteen trees because of drought. <coughs> a, a tall uh, ponderosa pines. So I'm going to try hewing my own timbers by hand this winter spring and use for for building a shop. Yeah, like that's you know you have you have all of these things you're doing, uh, Jonathan. Uh, you know, it's it's you're 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 definitely being useful to society in the world. You're being useful by doing the history, by teaching your son. And uh, I think I made a video about that a week or two ago. But it's important to be useful and to do things that better society and better the world as well. And uh, there's nothing more rewarding than than doing something or building something. Uh, you know, it's going to drive you crazy too. Things never go to plan. Like you know, how many how many guys here on this group, they've they've set out to do one of these work projects. And it went perfectly to plan without everything. Everything fell into place. Never happens. Never happens. There's always, always thing that comes up. <laughs> uh, Frank says, my dad says, uh, hi, John. Uh, John says, it's a, it's a glossed over time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, history is written by the winners. And, you know, it's, it's whoever wrote the books at the time. Most of it is just kind of like people read a few source materials and they try to piece it together. <clears throat> uh, the Comanche Empire is a great book. Uh, I live in what was called the Apache Empire, uh, and of uh, course the Irish made up a good number of the cavalry as well. Yeah, like um, there's some. Uh, what is it? There's an Irish general that got really famous during during the Civil War, but I think he was on the side of like the guys in the south, not the north. <clears throat> I can't remember his name, but I, I remember like someone mentioning that before. Um, some some Irish guy, I think, came from Leitrim or someplace. I can't remember. Uh, John says, hello, Frank, uh, you have a good Christmas. Uh, yeah, it was kind of relaxing, you know, just uh, <coughs> just around the house. And uh, I took just two or three days off. And then I had to come back and do, do packing. Uh, like, as always, after Christmas, a good few orders comes in. Because everyone's like me, they're stuck at home, and then they're just watching stuff. And you get bored pretty fast, and then you just go online. <coughs> it was quiet and warm for December. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. We haven't had any too mad storms yet. I think we had, like, one storm, and it wasn't, like, even that bad. Nice. Uh, got COVID on Christmas Day. <laughs> so did everyone, man. Everyone's had it so far. So that was my present. Bad for two weeks, but back to normal. Uh, my home family got it after. Um, yeah, like most most people I know now, they're 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 good within two days. Um, a lot of people who have been tested have no symptoms and stuff like that. Um, I know I've been around people that had it and have never had any symptoms. So, what's the point of you know testing your nose like like crazy if uh, if you have symptoms and you're sick and you know if you don't recover after a few days and then you go to a doctor or if it gets worse but you know you should know how your body is like you know as well if if you're just coughing and stuff that that you can deal with you're you're fine this is just you know how how i would think on myself <clears throat> but uh yeah I, I gotta get the booster now i, I don't know man it's like uh like I, I went to the, the two before and i thought that was it and how many of these boosters every year they're going to be making us get now it's uh you know yeah, it's like most of you. I've had my, I've had my fill of it as well. Yeah, I know my dad's got his booster anyway. My mom did, my sister did, and uh, I've just been a bit busy and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I must must get it out. There's uh, there's that Omni Unicron Uni crap one that's going around at the moment in in Ireland. Everyone seems to have it. Uh, you know, but hopefully we're hopefully John. This is the end of it. It gets uh, it gets uh, a bit tiring after all of these years. Like um. You know, imagine a time where we can walk without masks, go into a shop where it's okay to shake hands with people. Like, you know, it's uh, it's good. Uh, let's see now. Um, the Grey says, I was interested on your walk, Francis, when you said you used to find old signs down by the river. Uh, there may be a dump there. Uh, I collect old stone ginger beer bottles and have dug many uh, old dumps. Uh, the Grey I actually, me and my son found a number of old bottles. Um, I have them at home. I, I must bring them on the live stream. I can show you. Um, a few of them. Yeah, there's definitely like 
there's signs that there's a dump down by the river where people would come down to the river and dump a load of bottles and stuff like there's there's signs that people probably were bringing stuff in the horse carts um i think like the most beer bottles you find is like by diving in the river and, and going down you need a scuba gear to kind of get them uh but yeah like um you know going out and then finding things like beer bottles and signs uh you know there's old dumps there's there's everywhere and that's it. yeah it's everywhere in the uh the, the 32 uh the 32 counties uh which make up the the whole of ireland um tim it's going to be like the fuse lot yeah get out every year you're right tim i'd agree they're going well it is you know i it's one of those things like i think for a lot of people like i'm 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 fine with going with it i understand and stuff like that but like you know there's only so much people can say look you know when it started it was like come on guys just you know two weeks two weeks let's flatten the curve let's flatten the curve and you know just two more weeks just two more months just six more months let's just close down the businesses let's stop people from going to work it's like you know then you're like okay get your shots get your shots and it's going to be okay there's some weird side effects but don't worry about it you're, you're going to feel you know better and you know there comes a point where you've said yes to everything but then you just kind of get you know how many more of these boosters we want to do and you know i've already been exposed to it like three or four times already and more information is coming out and you know it's one of it's one of those things that uh i think everyone is uh you know, had their had their fill of uh, you know the news stories and stuff about it. That's probably why you guys run my live stream as well. You, you all get so tired of it. Um, let's see now. Uh, John says, I think the Irish general you're thinking of was from Tomb. Yeah, yeah. He's a wealthy businessman in the South and commanded to lead the Irish Confederate Brigade. Well worth to read. I, I I just vaguely remember it. I wouldn't be sure, but I know there was some some connection or something like that as well um was there some story about his statue they wanted to, to take down or something well, he was in the news uh, i remember last year i just remember hearing the story or something because there was like some controversy about something he was connected to as well and then he was like some irish guy and yeah <laughs> it was a uh, it was a bit it was it was on the news cycle in ireland for like a day last year i think uh ron evans said uh, francis uh, we don't have black done here in oregon usa but I'm studying what trees we have and how to identify them. Maybe try to make a stick at some point. Well, Ron, you're going about it the right way. Just look what's local, you know? Like, whatever, whether there's Indian tribes in the area, which is different things. Like, every area has some unique things that grow in that area that they're known for. That's how, like, all kind of craft and heritage businesses uh, they do. Like, it's, it's always, you know, finding stuff and being authentic and putting a story around that as well. You know, and find like you know there may mightn't be blackthorn in Oregon, but I'm sure there's other great woods as well. I'm sure there's there's <coughs> really interesting things that grow there that we don't have in any other parts of the world. Uh, uh yes, Tim, another uh, brick uh in the wall. Very good. The uh, the Jonathan says yes. I can't think of his name. There was a Confederate Irish Brigade, but it was not so big as the sixty nine to uh, New York one. <coughs> yeah, like uh, the Irish traveled and uh, there's a bit of ruckus or. Or getting things done, they probably would have got it done. <clears throat> and let's see. And um, McLennan led the Union Army, but he was removed eventually. Uh, there were several other Irish generals that were famous. Uh, some great songs about them. <clears throat> yeah, when the Confederate flag controversy was going on in the States a wee while ago, some people, not from Tume in the majority, wanted his commemorative plaque removed. But the locals refuse. Yeah, like everything gets political, political sized. Can't even say that word. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, like it's uh, you know, the thing about history is, is it should you know it still needs to be talked about. It still needs to be said. Like taking things down and removing things and do different things as well. <clears throat> like I don't know. It's if someone was a bad guy in history and did bad things, it's still good to know about. If he's a good guy, he did it, and you let you just give people the information and you let people do what they want to do with it <coughs> i don't really understand like the removing <coughs> of historical things like you know if there's a big statue of some guy who they didn't really like and stuff at least it kind of gives you you know you look at it and you're aware of this guy of what he did and stuff i don't know uh john says uh mclennan designed the cavalry saddle that lasted uh from before the civil war right wo through to uh to, to world war Two. Yeah, like um, you know, 
guys, when they have time to themselves, they, they, they can think of different things. They can improve things as well. Um, I wonder where all the great minds are, are going now. Like, um, I was reading, like, um, they're saying that like, all the, the smartest, like, guys who are into making and designing things are all gravitating towards cryptocurrency now. Like, while well, before they might have gone to work in finance or they might have gone to work in engineering and stuff. <clears throat> but now a lot of a lot of the great minds, they're, they're going to... Uh, to, to crypto to design things so you know maybe that's going to be the next uh, next big thing and uh, let's see ron i've got two mccaffrey sticks for the man cave now just need the third yeah you got to get three to be the collector ron uh just keep an eye on the site like i'm, I'm going i have a bunch bunch of new sticks going up this weekend uh i'm actually gonna try to get a good night's sleep tonight um last night i stayed up late <coughs> i wasn't even aware of the time it was like it was like i was just like looking on my phone watching stupid things on youtube <clears throat> and then i was like playing chess or something and i just forgot about the time and i looked and it was like half two at night and i was oh my god i can't believe i stayed up this late you know i just lost last track of time so i'm pretty tired today so uh i need to to get to uh, get to bed early uh you know tonight uh let's see old bottles are great for local history collectors because they have the name of the company and the address uh, you can place them exactly locality yeah i have this um Mac Mullins or Mullins um, bottle and we traced it to the uh, 1880s and uh, it's a really nice uh, it's a really nice bottle and uh, some some uh, bottle collector he offered my uh, my my young son who's 13 now he offered him 50 euro for it so it must be worth a bit of money if uh, if a collector was really keen to get it and trying to offer my son 50 euro to, so I don't know it's probably worth at least two or three times more than that because the Irish bottles with the Irish uh, names, <coughs> they're usually highly sought after by uh, by bottle makers, uh, because not a lot of them survived, and there's not many um, there's not many kind of dumps that are that are still accessible and things as well. <coughs> so a lot of the kind of like older ones, like you know the bottle that my son has, it says Mullins on it, and um, it has Trulli as well, and it's embossed and it has all the signs, and um, we we showed it to a few people, and it's got dated to the. Uh, 1880s when that company was existence from like uh, 18 i think it was the 1850s to 1910 and that style of bottle was in the 1880s they had it so that that was uh that was quite interesting just uh you know just after the famine time, times in ireland uh <coughs> but that says uh general michael corcoran was that lad confederate lad and he was born in in cork so he's uh he's a cork man corkonian Cochrane. I wonder is is that what the surname Corkonian Cochrane means? Someone from Cork or something like that? I must check. This probably means something Corka, probably from some Irish Irish uh, Irish word as well. There's a few Corcorans around Kerry anyway, and a few around Clorglen. So it's a name that uh, that we'd be familiar with as well. Uh <clears throat> but uh yeah, like uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? We just have uh, the last five minutes here. <laughs> Langer <laughs> Uh, so like if you're if you're Irish, you'll understand what my dad said. It's a it's a Cork slang word, a langer. You know, if you are referring to a man as being a langer, it's uh it's usually quite a quite a damning thing to say. Uh, you know, <laughs> langer. It's a langer boy. You know, I was hearing the the Cork lads. When you when you hear an accent from Cork, they they always speak higher. You know, Cork, Cork boy. So like uh you know like Roy Keane type of sound you know he 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 talked like that as well, so uh yeah you know a langer is it's a great word it's a great word dad it can be used in many instances as well, <laughs> but uh yeah that that's good using using Cork slang words uh will will get around the YouTube uh, profanity filter as well because they won't they won't know what that is a langer to to lang somewhere they won't even know what that means. <coughs> But uh, any more questions now, guys? Because I probably have to go in a few more minutes. Um, usually, I just kind of stay for an hour, and I'm kind of a bit, bit kind of wiped out and tired. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to put any more sticks up today. I'm too tired to do it. I think I'm just going to go home and relax. Uh, long week. Uh, James Coleman says, "I guess I need to get another of your sticks to be a collector." Yeah, James, you got to get three, at least three, to be a recognized stick collector. <coughs> Tommy Hanrahan, hi Francis. Uh, Aaron Cronbrook, uh, one of your cutting videos gave me the idea to make a blowpipe dart from a thorny shrub near the warehouse I work at while waiting for a truck. 
Um, I was docked an hour's pay for playing around. Worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, docking, ugh, docking your pay for like doing something like that. Like that's that's a bit, a bit annoying, but uh, but work it as well. But uh, yeah, don't get into any trouble, Iron Man. Don't be shooting blow darts. You know, you don't want to be shooting a black torn. You know, with the poisonous tip. <clears throat> you know, you shoot that, get someone in the neck. They're gonna swell up. You're gonna cause a. Uh, cause uh cause some some damage but uh you seem like an interesting guy Aaron you know and I like the way you think I like your mindset <clears throat> you know you saw something in nature you're like hmm I can use something with that you know you're, you're you're an ideas man Aaron you know your company should be giving you a pay raise and, and uh you know for for uh for seeing things that they can't see like you know maybe that's a a new revenue stream you can bring to your uh to your 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 number um let's see uh Ted yeah you uh your your uh your stick will, uh, I think I did up the label today, but I don't think it's going out till Monday. Uh, I think, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't know, is your collected by the courier yet, or is it gonna, <coughs> going to, uh, the courier came really early today, so I didn't have, like, uh, the orders that came in on Thursday night done. Um, I think yours is on the way, I must double check. Uh, so waiting for number seven, so Ted, yeah, you, 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 you have a nice collection now, and you have really good sticks you pick out. Run them off, have a great weekend, Frank and Francis. You too, guys. I think I think we'll call it uh we'll call it quits there. I'm feeling myself uh, my energy levels kind of uh, kind of going. As always, guys, it's a pleasure. You know I'm gonna keep making the sticks and I'll I'll keep uh you know putting myself out there. Some new faces on the live stream today and uh, getting to know some uh, some new new newer faces as well. And uh, always great to uh, to to talk to you guys and uh, have a great weekend and uh, you know. Shlon, 